Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Uh, we're going to do some more talking about history today. Uh, the period of time that we're going to talk about today is 1889 to 1919. And if you'll recall from last Sunday, in 1883, the name changed from Archer Lodge Baptist Church to White Oak Baptist Church after Elias Barnes donated an acre of land right here where we sit in a grove of oak trees. And they built a church in 1883. We sort of pick up from there. Before we talk some more about the church, I want to talk a little bit about Reverend Pippin. Um, he played a very vital role in something that happened that the church was a part of. That took place in 1903 when White Oak was one of the 30 founding churches in the Johnson Baptist Association. See, before then, White Oak Baptist Church was a member of the Raleigh Baptist Association, as were all the churches in this area that were Baptist churches. The problem was, in 1903, even though some of you may not realize this, there weren't a lot of cars. So getting to Raleigh, particularly from some places in Johnson County, was difficult. So as the number of Baptist churches grew and the, the number of people that were trying to get to Raleigh grew, all of a sudden they, they kind of woke up one day and said, you know what, this is starting to get a little hard. Let's see what we can do about it. So here's what happened. There was a motion read at the 1903 meeting. The motion said, because of the great number of churches now composing the Raleigh Association and the further difficulty of assembling their representatives for associated purposes on account of the vastness of the territory over which it was spread, be it resolved, first, that we advise a division of the present territory and churches with a view to forming a new association. Resolved, second, that we recommend the lines bounding the territory of Johnson County as the general boundary lines of the proposed new association. The vote was taken. It wasn't a unanimous vote. It actually went 41 to 31, 41 for, 31 against. But as happened so many times in these things, on motion of Brother A.A. A. Pippin, the vote was made unanimous. Pippin was a pastor of White Oak who served a total of almost 30 years, from 1901 to 1919, and again from, I believe it was 1928 until 1939. So he served a long time at the church. He was very important along with our church in starting the Johnson Baptist Association. So on November 27, 1903, with the blessings of the Raleigh Baptist Association, 30 churches gathered in Selma to officially form the Johnson Baptist Association. Well, just as membership across the area was growing, so was membership at White Oak. As a result, it was decided that White Oak should have a new church building. No one knows exactly what happened to the old building, which was built and again in 1883. Um, I don't know if it was torn down, if it wound up as somebody's barn, which happened a lot to old churches somewhere along the way. We don't know that. Um, but in 1910, White Oak had a new home. The initial 1883 building had been a simple one-room structure, which was not unlike the Masonic Lodge that sat down here, which the church had had for 23 years. But this new building was large and imposing and elegant in appearance. It definitely was a church. The main sanctuary was created by the intersection of a pair of two-story high wings, each with pairs of tall, slim windows with pointed tops. I think it was the window on the far left that Jake slipped out of to go see the movies in Wendell on Sunday. <clears throat> anyway, the entry was the base of a three-story tower placed at the intersection of the two wings. At the top of the tower, a church bell was located and was rung to call people to the service. It was also rung at times of crisis and important events. Across the back of the church back there, you can see there was another wing for Sunday school rooms. The ceilings were all very high, especially in a sanctuary where they were at least 20 feet high, not unlike what we have in here. Heating, unfortunately, in the wintertime was a difficult task. Tall, freestanding wood heaters were used, and the wood supplied by members as they cut wood for their own homes and for their tobacco barns. The stovepipes rose up, and these stoves to the ceiling ran across the ceiling and were held up by wire. Someone had to come hours on Sunday morning before any church service in the winter in order to get the heater started and get the place warm. Unfortunately still, people close to the stoves were always too hot and anybody standing away from them or sitting away from them was always too cold. So you had to bring a coat just in case in the winter in case you didn't get close to the heater. Not long after the dedication of the new building, the Johnson Baptist Association met at White Oak Baptist Church on November 9 to 11, 1910. 
We have another photograph. This photograph shows a group of people taken in 1910, but we don't really think it was a Johnson Baptist Association meeting because there was a lot of, a lot of women there, a lot of children there. What is more likely was it's a picture of the church membership. And we can speculate that it was, that it was almost all of the 186 members that we had at the time. That's how big the church was then, it was 186 members. Now here's another photograph of the church taken sometime around after 1912. You've seen this church, but one of the reasons that we show this picture is if you look in the background, there's something back there that you hadn't seen before. And for those of you, how many kids in here go to Archer Lodge School or go to Riverdale or Archer Lodge Middle School? That is Archer Lodge School. 19 that was built in 1912 back in the back oh good somebody's got a laser pointer i love that <laughs> and what looks to be an old model t well that's interesting too because not very many people had cars here people were still driving to church on wagons riding horses or riding a bicycle as you see there one other thing that I want to mention is if you notice in a lot of these things, one of the things that people have, have asked about sometimes, well, how did, the church, how did the church get that land on the other side of the road out here where the parking lot is? Well, actually, when this land was deeded to the church, there wasn't a road. It was all one lot. The road was put in later to go between the church and the school. That school building lasted until, I believe, 1924 when the big building was built. And you'll, we'll see more about all of this coming up next week. But this gives us sort of an abbreviated thing. We don't have a lot of photographs between, 19, between 1889 and 1919, but we do have some images, some images of a beautiful church that stood until the 1950s when this sanctuary was built and the other one torn down. Sorry, I was going to add one more thing that I forgot to put in. Just like we did last week, we are going to be singing songs today that were written during that 1889 to 1919 period. So enjoy those and think about the writers of those songs well over 100 years ago as you sing those today. <laughs> 